The audio tag is used to include audio on your web pages. In this lesson, we will learn how to use the audio tag to include or embed audio into your web pages. Before we start, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to make sure that you catch all tutorials as they come out. Alright, let's get right into adding audio using the audio tag in our web pages. So I will start off by creating our web page. So this is the uh, going to be our root folder, uh, multimedia audio. And then this here is our MP3 file that we're going to be embedding or in, 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 in setting into our web pages. Uh, so, and this is actually just the music that you hear at the beginning of my tutorials. Okay. Anyway, so start off by creating index.html. Yes. And then I'll just right click, open with notepad plus plus so that we can edit it. And then as is our custom, just zoom in a bit. Duck type HTML, HTML, HTML. I'm sure now if you've been following along, you're kind of like used to this. So you are already way ahead of where you used to be when we started off with our tutorials. You should already know HTML, the header, what the type of things that get inside. Uh, the header I'll just call that audio web page and then the body and the type of things that get inside the body element uh, body and then let's just give it a h1 h1 say audio web page all right so now to insert audio into our web pages we use the audio element now the audio element is uh, a normal element or it's not an empty element in that it actually has a closing tag i'll explain uh, that in in a moment the audio tag has a few similarities to the image tag that we learned about last time which is a an empty element the image element is the image element is uh, an it's an empty element in that it does not have like a, a closing tag as we see with the audio uh, it has a source which is the most important attribute to it that def uh, specifies where the the image is to be found and then it has a bunch of other um, attributes such as the title which is a global attribute by the way and the alt uh, which is what is shown when the image is for whatever reason is not seen that's what we saw so the audio element looks like this as i said opening and closing tags now what you actually put inside here is inside the element itself you will put there's there are a bunch of other things that you can actually put but we will cover in the next tutorial because this is part one by the way audio part one and um we'll have a second one because i didn't want to to uh to fill this tutorial with uh, too much information or rather the things that i want us to cover in the next one they're a little bit involved so i wanted to give uh it its own attention so in any case uh, either than the other thing that i'm going to cover the one other thing that you put inside the audio element is actually fallback text so that is to say should the browser that the your the the, the person is using to view your web page be unable to support audio it will then go and show whatever you put inside this audio tag so for instance we would say let's open it up and say uh, maybe I'll create a paragraph and then in the paragraph I will say something like uh, this browser 
In other words, it would say this browser referring to the browser that the person would be using to view the page. This browser does not support HTML5 audio. Yeah, the message like that. And then uh, what's a good practice is to actually uh, then say something like, uh, maybe we'll say break line. Then to say something like, um, okay, let me just, can I do this? Let me do this. I'll just do this. And then you can say something like, um, you, you provide a link to the audio file. So you would say, here is a link. Let's do this. Remember, we learned about links already. Here is a link to download the file. And then you would say href is equal to. And then in our case, we want to give them a link to the file. And there it is. So then by them clicking on that link, they will then be able to download the file and then they can listen it using whatever uh, uh, audio, uh, whatever application or software that they, or app that they can use on their phone or computer that they normally use to listen to audio files. So again, this will come up. It's a fallback. That is to say, should their browser not support the, the audio element and its capabilities, uh, what it's supposed to, to make possible for the browser, uh, then this alternative which you're giving them and it's good practice, you don't even have to do this, but it's actually good practice to then give them perhaps a link where they can go and download that audio. Okay, so let's assume now that uh, everything is works well. So what would you put? The most important element uh, in your, in your, I mean, the most important attribute in your audio element is the source attribute, similar to the image. Uh, uh, when we were dealing with adding images, you have to have a source which specifies what or where the audio file that you want to include in your page is to be found. So we've added this. Let's see if this does anything. Which, by the way, I'll tell you now, it actually, uh, it sh we shouldn't see anything as of yet. Uh, but anyways, let's open. Let's maximize. Okay, we can't really see anything. We can't hear anything. Uh, and that's fine. That's what we want to see. Uh, or what we expect to see, which then leads us to the second attribute that can that uh, is to be included now by the way the reason why you are able to add an audio element and then not see or or view anything is because you are actually able to add audio elements into your page uh and then use them or, or use them in such a way that is not interactive with the user and the way in which you do this it would be through javascript you'll see that I keep on re referencing a number of things that you can do with JavaScript. There's quite a lot of things that you can do with JavaScript, but we're not going to be covering that. What we're going to do is we are going to cover audio from the perspective of you actually using the browser's um, inbuilt ability to actually allow the user to interact with the audio. That is to say, allow the user to play the audio, to stop the audio, to uh, take it to set to to cause it to go to a particular timestamp, etc. That's how we're going to uh, be looking at it. And to do this, that's that brings us to our second attribute. So again, just a quick recap: the source specifies where the audio is to be found. The second one is an attribute known as controls. When you set this attribute, it's an empty empty attribute when it doesn't have like a value. When it's available, it's a Boolean. So in other words, it's either there or it's not there. So it's like a true or false. Once you, you include it, you're saying, okay, I want it to be there. What this attribute says is that it's saying, I want this audio element, or the audio that is contained, I want the user to be able to control it. So use 
the 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 the, the controls that come uh, 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 the default controls that come with the browser that are installed, if you like, or they come packaged with the browser itself. That's what this thing says. By the way, I'll, I'll mention this. The controls, they vary from browser to browser. They will not necessarily look the same because, you know, browsers, uh, they, they, they are not 100% the same, though they try to implement the same standards. Anyways, let's go back and see what this does. And look at that. There is our audio element as, uh, as, as we can see over here. Let's go back. We can see it's audio. It's just a fall back. If for whatever reason this browser Chrome did not support audio, then we would see this fallback text. This is what would actually be displayed. In fact, I'm just going to copy this and put it outside. Whoa, okay. There we go. This is what would be displayed if this element was not um, uh, uh, supported. And then when you click on it, see, it actually goes to the audio file on itself. And just pause it. In some browsers, it would actually just download the file. Uh, that's what it would do. So anyways, let's go back. Let's remove this. Refresh. Okay, now play. There you go. And as you can see, I can pause and I can take it somewhere else. Take it to the beginning. I can mute it. You can do all of those things. But let's pause it for now so that you can hear me clearly. So that's what the controls uh, attribute allows. Again, if we remove it, then it will go invisible. There are no controls that are visible. Uh, that the user can see so let's let's bring back the controls and let's move to the next attribute the next attribute is auto play what the auto play attribute says is that as soon as the 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 audio is downloaded enough for it to be playable as soon as the browser is able to start playing the audio it should automatically play it without the user having to press the play button. So let's save. Oopsie, sorry. Let's save. Come back and refresh. We lower the volume. So as you see, let's refresh again. You see, it automatically plays the audio without having to press play because of the auto play attribute now uh, generally you 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 kind of like want to avoid as much as possible unless it, unless you are creating a web page or a website that requires that you auto play audio you want to tend to avoid doing that because it tends to irritate people when they get to a website and they are not expecting for audio to all of a sudden start playing. Uh, unless, of course, this is an integral part of your web experience and it makes sense. When a person is visiting your web page, they expect that some audio would play immediately. Um, or maybe perhaps you can do it in such a way that you, you lower the volume. But again, that's a slightly advanced um, uh, topic. Generally, you, you kind of like don't want to use this as much as possible, the autoplay. Auto but should you need to do it, you want for whatever reason, when a person comes to a page, when they learn some music is not playing, then the autoplay uh, uh, attribute is, is, is there for that. Then the next attribute that I want for us to look into is the loop attribute. So be before I put the loop attribute in, let's come back here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to remove the autoplay attribute. We've seen what it does. Then I'll come back here and then I'll play. So you can imagine if this song plays, and then let's say it gets to the end, as you can see. When it gets to the end, it stops, right? 
So for if, for instance, you want a, a certain song to, to keep on playing over and over and over again, a loop, uh, as we, we know the concept of loop where we, when in the various uh, uh, sound apps that we usually deal with, for instance, VLC or whatever sound app you deal with in your phone, there's, all, there's usually a loop feature. So it's the same concept over here. You add the loop attribute when you want audio, when it ends, to play. So let's test this. So going to refresh. Play. And then we imagine that it's about to end. Okay. So I'm not pressing anything. I'm not doing anything else. Give it those five seconds. There we go. So it automatically looped and it will continue doing this while it's on your page or while your, your page is active. It will continue looping uh, uh, without stopping unless, of course, uh, your page is closed or whatever the case, case may be. So that's, that, that's the loop attribute. Another attribute that I'd like for us to look into is the muted attribute. In this attribute, you're simply saying that when the uh, when the browser when the web page loads in the browser, the audio should be by default muted. So if we come over here, uh, oh, I've already done it. Let's let me remove the muted. So you see, as you can see, the 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 um, the sound is not muted by default. So you saw it plays, but if I then add the muted attribute, which is also a Boolean attribute, uh, true or false, um, you see now it's muted. So even if I were to play the audio, the audio is playing, but by default, it's muted. So if you feel like you want the default value of your audio to be muted for whatever reason, then you would use the muted attribute now uh, the audio file has a bunch of other attributes which i would uh, suggest that you go and read about uh if if you if you really just search online and say audio actually i i, I want you guys to do this exercise uh, so that you can this is a very very integral part of learning software development you need to learn how to use Google. Maybe I'll actually do a tutorial uh, on, on, on how to effectively use Google. Uh, the most important thing is to make sure that you know exactly what it is that you are searching for. You know all of the facts that you can gather and then you know what the missing parts are and then you go and you, you, it's that general principle when you are using Google for anything. Uh, but it's, um, it becomes a critical skill because many of the things that, uh, you know, you, you know, many of even the programming languages, when you are uh, proficient enough as far as software development is concerned, you can learn an entire programming language, uh, which is, for instance, the, the case with me uh, as far as, uh, in fact, what I'm teaching you, I learned it purely off uh, of the internet through Google. I never learned web development at school. At school, I learned Java, C++, and a bunch of other programming languages, which we will cover in, in, in this channel over time. But as far as web development is concerned, I learned it entirely uh, through the internet in the same way that maybe p perhaps for some of you, uh, you are encountering, you are in, uh, you are encountering web development or programming in general through these uh, tutorials that you are finding online. So it's, it's very critical for you to learn to, 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 to use Google for yourself to find, uh, uh, some, some things. Uh, so just search and, 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 and try to find what other attributes are associated with the audio element. I've, I've covered the basic ones. There are some more that I'll cover in, in the next lesson. Um, which should give you a, a, a good foundation as far as the audio element is concerned, enough for you to start using it. In fact, already you know uh, more than enough for you to insert audio on your web page, given if you 
uh, have an MP3 or an, an audio file, in, in, you know now how to insert it in your web page. But there are other attributes that are used for various other things. We'll cover some more, but uh, learn these uh, for yourself. And then, of course, in the comments section, if you have any question or maybe you come across an attribute, you're not exactly certain what they are speaking about, uh, feel free uh, to ask me. In fact, I, I want your questions because, as I said, just a reminder, at the end of the week, I always go through, I, I look through all the questions that have been asked, new questions, and I dedicate a video uh, to answer those questions at the end of the week. So, uh, yeah, uh, go through this exercise, play along with it, and tell me what challenges you face in the comment section. Uh, and again, ask whatever questions that you have so that we can, you know, keep this ball rolling on our journey in making you a web developer. Okay, and that will be the end of this lesson or our first lesson on the audio element or adding audio on your web pages. You can watch other tutorials over here. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out on tutorials as they come out. Have you subscribed? Are you done? Okay, cool.